Take a moment to consider the money in your wallet, or perhaps the lack of it. Our world seems to be moving towards cashless societies faster every year, and in many parts of the world, a simple swipe of a plastic card or scan of a smartphone has become the de facto means of purchasing goods. But in the time it took counting bills to evolve into seamlessly performing a beep boop with your phone, a series of technological advancements have dramatically transformed our understanding and use of money. You see, before things like credit cards, PayPal, and cryptocurrencies all popped up in just a matter of decades, paper money was the OG economic innovation of its time. I mean, it's easy for us to think about paper money, a fungible little banknote kept in our wallets, porcelain pigs, and mattresses. But was the introduction of paper money a radical innovation or an intuitive progression from coinage. To better understand how paper money came to be, let's step back into the 7th century and visit China's flourishing Tang Dynasty. Our story begins with a well-off merchant lugging around an enormous load of copper coins. What seemed like a simple means of carrying around your wealth soon became an inconvenient way of conducting business, especially for wealthier prospering merchants, who for the first time in China were accumulating enough wealth through their businesses that soon, lugging around large amounts of copper coins proved to be a flawed system for many more established merchants. The coins were heavy, drew unwanted attention, and were terribly impractical to deal with when making large purchases. Burdened by these limitations, merchants saw a more practical way to store and transport their wealth. So they started leaving their coins with a trusted custodian, who would then issue a piece of paper confirming the deposit. The original depositor could then barter with the piece of paper, and upon returning this paper receipt back to the trusted custodian, the person possessing the paper slip would have access to the coins. This simple piece of paper was about to trigger a financial revolution that would forever alter the global economy. 300 years later, when a copper shortage presented a bit of a predicament for the state during the Song Dynasty. The government ingeniously built upon the earlier concept of depository slips and introduced the first widely circulating paper notes. These notes promised to be redeemable for something valuable at a later time. Having realized the potential of this efficient form of currency, the central government seized the opportunity to monopolize its issuance. They established factories in key cities dedicated solely to printing these banknotes. The control of the money supply then gave the government an essential tool to manage the economy, enabling them to stimulate spending in times of economic downturn or control inflation when the economy heated up. But the financial ingenuity didn't end there. The Mongol-founded Yuan Dynasty also attempted to use paper currency, but unlike the Tang Dynasty, they created a unified national system that was not backed by silver or gold. This currency was issued by the Yuan, led by Genghis Khan's grandson, Kublai Khan, and served as the world's first fiat currency. The Yuan government attempted to prohibit all transactions in or possession of silver or gold, which had to be turned over to the government. Anyone forging another kind of money would be punished by death, an important point that can't be overlooked. The problem with many new forms of money around this time in history is that people were reluctant to adopt them. Genghis Khan's grandson wasn't going to face such a difficulty. He took measures to ensure the authenticity of his currency, and if you didn't use it, if you wouldn't accept it in payment, or preferred to use gold, or silver, or copper, or iron, or pearls, or salt, or any of the older forms of payment prevalent in China at the time, he would have you killed. And this harsh policy solved the issue of uptake and circulation in the market. While that proved to be a straightforward way of establishing the use of currency in the market, navigating the implications of economics required a steep learning curve, and markets often suffered from a great deal of instability. For example, in 1260, the Yuan government was struggling to control rising inflation, eventually leading the government to replace their existing paper currency with a completely new one in 1287. But inflation that resulted from undisciplined money printing remained a problem that hindered the Yuan dynasty over the next eight decades until its eventual demise. Despite these struggles, the invention of paper money was a tremendous burst of innovation, and one that did not stay confined to just China. The Venetian merchant Marco Polo famously explored China and shared wondrous tales of their culture, innovations, and trade secrets after returning to Europe. While in China, he saw things like gunpowder, coal, eyeglasses, and porcelain for the first time. But one of the most overlooked inventions that impressed Marco Polo the most was the invention of paper money, something he observed and documented thoroughly. And Marco Polo was certainly right to be amazed. He felt that instruments of trade and finance were inventions in the same way 
way that creations of art and discoveries of science were inventions, product of the human imagination. So after a quarter of a century living and traveling throughout the near and far east, he returned to his native Venice in 1295 to tell Europeans about the financial ingenuity of the seemingly unknown world. These insights then changed Europe, and if we fast forward to the 17th century, we can see China's solution from the 7th century Tang Dynasty implemented by London's goldsmith bankers, who began issuing receipts payable to the possessor, not the original depositor. These notes, no longer tied to precious metals, laid the foundation for modern banknotes, later evolving into fiat money whose value is determined by social and legal consensus. It all seems quite remarkable when you look at the world today, technologically enabled to reimagine a new financial world and build off the financial ingenuity that got us here. The era of digital currencies and cryptocurrencies is challenging the reign of physical cash as well as institutional order. Substituting benefits of cash such as autonomy and privacy with alternative trade-offs like security, interconnectivity, and access. Looking back, when we examine the history of money, we see that every chapter in the storybook is some type of response to the needs and challenges of its time. Just as the merchants of the Tang Dynasty sought a solution to their cumbersome coinage, we now find ourselves turning to digital solutions for a more connected and fast-paced world. But will a digital medium lend itself to greater government surveillance and regulation, or a cultural liberation of financial autonomy? Or will everything just stay as it is? In the end, the story of paper money teaches us that money isn't just about coins, notes, or digital credits. It's about trust, innovation, and our collective ability to adopt and evolve. So, as we navigate this digital revolution, it's worth pondering, what will be the paper money of the future? Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like and subscribe button. Check out our old videos and be sure to tune in next week where we tell the scandalous story of the UN's oil for food program. And as always, let us know in the comments what other stories from economics, history, or beyond you would like us to cover. And keep coming back to learn a little bit more every video.